November 2018, I did a Q&A and I had several questions that I couldn't fit in there. This question is from Emma J and it is tarantulas versus true spiders. What are the differences? When we think of tarantulas, what most often comes to mind? That they are large, heavy bodied and hairy, that they live in deserts or that they have huge fangs. Do we think of what we've seen in Hollywood, a terrifying eight-legged creature that can launch itself across the room and deliver a deadly bite? And what about true spiders, the ones we find in our homes and gardens? What first comes to mind when we think of them? One thing is that tarantulas are much older than true spiders. True spiders are down toward the bottom of the tree. We will talk much more about that in another video. What do tarantulas and true spiders have in common? They have spinnerets, fangs, venom glands, though not all spiders have venom. Eight legs, two body regions, male palpi, and silk spinning. Tarantulas have parallel chelicerae that only bite top down, while true spiders have fangs that work in opposition, which allows more flexibility. Tarantulas are larger species that live in warmer climates, although species like the Aphonopelma iodeus live as far north as northern Utah, USA, and some South American tarantulas have been found high in the mountains. True spiders tolerate colder temperatures than most tarantulas. According to the Burke Museum, it is a myth that true spiders move indoors during cold weather. With the exception of certain species, like the European house spiders, most species remain outdoors year-round. Spiders contain a type of antifreeze in their bodies that allows them to tolerate temperatures of minus 5 Celsius or even colder. Their bodies simply become dormant until the weather warms up. Another difference is their feet. Tarantulas and their close relatives have densely hairy feet used to climb surfaces. They need the extra adherence due to their massive size. Each foot pad has bristles that are covered in hundreds of thousands of setules that can only be seen using an electron microscope. While tarantulas have two claws and claw tufts, the orb weaver members of the true spiders have three claws, one of which acts like a thumb and aids them in climbing their web. Tarantulas are ambush hunters that lie in wait for their prey. Some remain in their burrows or stand on their sheets of webbing until they sense prey, while true spiders often use webbing to capture prey and or use webbing to move from one location to another. Another difference is venom. Tarantulas have less potent venom overall than many true spiders. New world tarantula bites are similar to bee stings, while old worlds do pack more punch and are reported to involve swelling, pain, and sometimes nausea. While true spiders, most are harmless unless a bite becomes infected, they do harbor species with deadly bites, such as that of the Brazilian wandering spider and the Sydney funnel web. According to the National Institute of Health, tarantula venom is not considered dangerous to humans. An exception may occur if a person develops infection or has an allergic reaction to the venom. Tarantula venom is being studied for pharmaceutical purposes, perhaps to treat pain or epilepsy. Still studies on the potency of tarantula venom are lacking. We do know that different species, while similar in some respects, have varying venom compositions and amounts, as do males versus females and juveniles versus adults. More comprehensive studies need to be conducted on juvenile tarantulas to see how venom toxicity and composition changes over time. It is also evident that mature male tarantulas may have more potent venom since they travel in search of females and encounter larger predators. True spider venom. Spider bites, known as arachnidism, are cocktails of peptides, proteins, sugars, and other substances. Some venoms are neurotoxins that affect the nervous system of prey animals and sometimes humans, and cytotoxins that liquefy their meals. There are no known cases of cytotoxic venom in Australia. Black widows and redback spiders are known for neurotoxic venom that attacks the human nervous system, while recluse spiders have necrotizing cytotoxic venom which causes lesions and blisters. 
Neurotoxic venom kills more quickly than cytotoxic venom. New World tarantulas have urticating setae, the hair-like growths that cover their bodies, either on their legs or abdomen, that they flick off to agitate predators, while true spiders lack urticating hairs. Tarantulas have two pairs of spinnerets, the second pair almost invisible, and most true spiders have six spinnerets. Tarantulas have eight eyes. Arboreal tarantulas generally have better vision than terrestrial and fossorial tarantulas, although what we know of their vision, it is limited to shadows, light, and motion. Web-building true spiders have poor eyesight, like tarantulas. While true spiders usually have eight eyes, some have six or less, and some have none. But all tarantulas have eight eyes. True spiders with good eyesight. According to the Infinite Spider blog, several species of hunting spiders have good eyesight, including wolf spiders, jumping spiders, bolus spiders, and net casting spiders. The exceptional jumping spider. Unlike other spider species, the jumping spiders have an eye up, so to speak, in the spider world because their vision is exceptional. Not only do they see ultraviolet light, but it is said that they can see the craters on the moon. How do they do this? The two large eyes in the center of the jumping spider's forehead are the eyes that pick up detail and color. The second pair of eyes detect motion and tell the spider where to look, and the third pair has a function as of yet unknown. Jumping spider eyes also have four layers of light detection cells that scientists have yet to understand, and according to Science Magazine, jumping spiders have one lens that has one retina out of focus and one lens on top of it that is in focus, and this is to help the spider judge distance. On top of all these amazing evolutions, jumping spider eyes have filters that allow them to see more colors than even humans can, according to National Geographic. And a direct quote from the inverse, the jumping spider's eyes also have another feature. They work like a Galilean telescope. Their two main eyes each have a long gel-filled tube beneath their lenses. As the light travels down the tube, it bends. The bottom of the tube spreads the light out and enlarges the images before it hits the spider's retina. Their eyes even swivel like a telescope. The muscles in their retina allow them to change their point of view without moving their head or entire body. Is it surprising that jumping spiders chase lasers like cats? I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Uh, there are undoubtedly more ways in which tarantulas and true spiders differ, some I have not mentioned and some that have yet to be discovered. If you know of additional differences, maybe like shapes and appendages on pedipalpal bulbs or specifics of tarantulas versus true spiders like their mouths and teeth, please leave a comment for discussion and reference below. I'd like to end this video with a photo I took of my Brazilian black, the Gramostola pulchra. This is not Gurgle. She is named after a troll that tortures little gnomes, and this was a story from my childhood. She is quite a character. I love her. She has so many quirks. And this is my little OBT. It is probably an inch and a half, two inches, and it hangs out in its burrow entrance all the time. So if you have a tarantula that has a funny quirk or a true spider, please share in the comments about them. I would love to hear from you, and I want to thank you, and have a great day.